a healthy living giveaway. 12 weeks, one goal, be healthy. All right, welcome to week two of the Tokyo Be Healthy Challenge. How did you do on week one? Did you keep a journal? I went low tech. I have these, this little notebook costs, I don't know, like 60 cents. I think I got a pack of two for 60, 70, I don't know what it was. It was, I bought it a while ago. Easy to keep just in your back pocket and I keep take notes in it, so I use this as my food journal. I learned that I'm not a very good eater. Well, I kind of already knew that. Two and a half cups of cereal, one cup of milk. That was a big bowl of cereal, and I usually don't even eat. I've, I've been really good, but I, that day, I, I don't know what got into me, but I thought, I'm just going to have cereal. And then I had a banana. For a snack, I had two squares of dark chocolate. And actually, in another video, I'm going to talk about dark chocolate and how uh, some of the health benefits of, of dark chocolate. This was 85%. It didn't taste very good, I have to tell you. It wasn't even worth it. 85%, it doesn't taste that good. But they, if you look at the carbs, chocolate has a lot of carbs. If you get like just real milk chocolate, it has tons of carbs and no fiber. This had like, for, per serving, it had like 8 grams of carbs, but it had 2 grams of fiber. 6 net carbs. Uh, to do net carbs, you do... Carbs minus fiber. All right, uh, pork rinds zero carbs, and they don't taste that great. So I'm, I'm rethinking the the low carb thing that if it's really worth it because both of these are actually pretty high calorie. The chocolate and the pork rinds are pretty high calorie things. Uh, then I uh, that day I didn't prepare uh, a lunch, so here you see I got a turkey breast sub from Subway. And then I had, for in the afternoon, I ate more pork rinds and another square of chocolate. Two slices of pizza for dinner. Uh, my, my, my wife made homemade pizza. She uses whole wheat flour. And we use, it's like a veggie pizza. I had some meetings I had to go to and I got back. And there were brownies. My wife let brownies out. And I said, oh, I, I can, you know, I looked at it back in the day. And actually, this was pretty a good day for me. I actually filled up that much of my notebook. Where typical days, I, I really fill up the whole page. And I said, I probably can handle a brownie. So I had a brownie, but I was up, you know, late working, which I am almost every night. And the brownies called my name, and I got a second brownie. But luckily, I, I, I kid you not, if I was not keeping a journal, I bet I would have eaten three to four brownies. They're, you know, they're small brownies. Just without thinking, I just would have gone back for more and gone back for more and gone back for more. But because I was recording it and knew I had to write it down... I withheld, and I didn't even, and in that moment, I didn't even write it down as I ate it, which that, if you don't write it down as you eat it, it makes a big difference. So I totally recommend recording it as you eat it, or even before you eat it, just so you mentally say, is this worth eating, am I going to write it down? I want you to continue to keep a journal, and if you didn't do such a good job, try and do better. Commit yourself to doing better. If you found that the technique you tried, maybe you didn't work as well, try a different technique. Try getting one of these little notebooks. Uh, go to a dollar store. I think they can have them there. Target, Walmart. You'll find them. Just a small little notebook, notebook that you can keep in your back pocket. Keep going until you're successful at it. And if you were successful and it helped, then keep doing it. Keep doing it. Uh, there's no reason to stop. It's not that hard. It takes two seconds. And if it's right in your back park pocket, it's not inconvenient at all. <clears throat> all right. You ready for week two? Week 2 challenge is the Inception challenge. Okay? I don't know if you've seen Inception, but I saw it for the first time this week. And I was trying to think of a challenge to do, and I was like, oh, should I do a physical challenge? Should I do an eating challenge? This week is another mental challenge, okay? We need to overcome, a lot of times, addictions. Food addictions and bad habits. If you've seen the, the movie Inception, here's what happens in the movie. This guy wants to make his competitor split up his company. So he wants Leonardo DiCaprio's char character to put a thought in his head. They couldn't just go into the person's dream and put a thought in their head, in the, in the dream. They couldn't even go down two levels and try to put a dream. They had to go down three levels, and then, or four, three or four levels into dreams. That deep down in your subconscious, okay... It's hard to get that deep down in your subconscious. Obviously, it's a movie. It's fictional. And the things that we see, the things that we're told, we create a belief system. Okay? So we are going to figure out, this week's challenge is to figure out what our belief system is 
and install a new successful belief system. Okay, because the belief system you have right now may not be the right belief system to get you to where you want to be. You have some limiting beliefs. My limiting beliefs, for example, are I can't reach 10% body fat. It's just not realistic. 10% body fat, that's just not realistic. That's bodybuilder. And I'm not a bodybuilder, so it's, that's not realistic. So that's limiting me because I, I kind of had that belief. Exercise isn't fun. You know, this is one that maybe isn't a huge strong belief, but I don't look forward to exercise. It's a chore. Exercise is a chore. That's a limiting belief. Eating is fun. Eating anything is fun. It's fun to eat. That's a belief, and it's limiting. And just so you know, so I can get, give the guy credit, this is coming from the book The Body Fat Solution by Tom Venuto. This is all about burning body fat. So, but the first thing is, is our belief system. All right, here's some examples. Ask yourself, what causes you to be overweight? The answers that will come out will be limiting beliefs. What, what's preventing you from getting leaner? What's preventing you? Okay, so why are you fat and what's stopping you from getting leaner? The thoughts that come through your head, those, the, the reasons why are your limiting beliefs. Okay, so we need to challenge those beliefs, okay? We need to create doubt in our mind, okay? So, example, I can't reach 10% body fat. How can I create a doubt so that I don't quite, that I question that belief? One example is, find somebody who maybe is even fatter than you are, or was fatter than you are, but did reach that, okay? And they're, no matter how big you are, unless you're the, big, the fattest man alive, somebody who weighs more than you has achieved what you want to achieve, which means it's possible. So if it was possible for them, you might start to doubt whether it's, it's not possible for you. Well, is it impossible, or is it just going to be harder than I want to do, or harder than I think? Another th way to put doubt in your on uh, those belief system is to realize that that belief is not yours, that somebody else put that belief on you. Maybe your parents told you, maybe your friend told you, maybe you just re start to think about the media that you've seen. All right, now that we have a doubt, that we're, we're, we're setting it up, we're setting that, that limiting belief up, we've got to topple it down. We have to install a new belief. I need to put the belief in there that I can reach 10% body fat. That needs to become a belief. I have to believe that. And this week is more of a mental challenge for you to come up with what it is or how you can topple these beliefs. I'll do a video in the middle of the week to discuss some techniques to installing new belief systems. And Tom Benito gives us seven attitudes or beliefs necessary for success or that will help you succeed. So tell me how you did last week on keeping a journal. Leave it in the comments. And this week, def identify your limiting beliefs, stopping you from reaching your health and fitness goals. Identify what your belief, successful belief should be, okay, or the successful belief that you want to install. That is, it, should, it shouldn't take you very much time once you sit down and do it, but that's what I want you to do. Identify three limiting beliefs and three successful beliefs that you need to achieve what you want to achieve.